Hi, it's Rebecca Whitman, your host of the Balanced, Beautiful, and Abundant Show. I'm a top-rated life coach, an international best-selling author, and a multi-passionate entrepreneur. I'm on a mission to help you go from burned out to balanced, beautiful, and abundant. The experts on this show will help you achieve work-life balance so that you can experience abundance in seven pillars of life, spirituality, health, emotions, romance, mindset, social, and financial life. When you have all seven pillars of life in alignment, you are balanced, beautiful, and abundant. Let's go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Balanced, Beautiful, and Abundant Show. I am your host, Rebecca Whitman. I am helping you go from burned out, overwhelmed, completely exhausted to balanced, beautiful, and abundant. I want to thank all our loyal listeners. Because of you, we keep climbing the ranks in the top podcasts in the world. So keep sharing this show and subscribing and rating and reviewing. I love you and I appreciate you so much. Let's talk about our wonderful guest. Welcome to the show, Michael Ashabranner. Thank you. It's a a pleasure being here. You're a rock star. I am so excited. I'm sick today, but I'm excited. I forgot I'm sick. That's how excited I am. Thank you. I I love it. Well, I had such a great time being a part of your community and doing a live with you. And it's so great to have you on my show. You are a lot of fun. So even a sick Michael Ashabranner is better than a healthy most people because you have you love to have fun and so do I. So this is going to be an amazing interview. I can't wait to tell my audience all about your background. Uh, Mike is known as the redneck financial coach or connector, whichever you prefer. He is an unconventional advisor who helps establish entrepreneurs grow their net worth through his network. He is known for his straight shooting strategies and down to earth advice. He pioneers a lively online community called the Hounds of Business. He is a multi-certified financial advisor known for helping his clients multiply their money. He is world famous for his camouflage cap and cool country proverbs that lead crowds calling for an encore. Well, you did not disappoint. I know the uh, YouTube people can see that you are in your uh, camouflage cap. The uh, the audio people can't, but uh, he does not disappoint when he uh, shows up. So how did you, I know you grew up in Kentucky, which uh, I'm from Cincinnati, which borders Kentucky, as you know, a lot of people don't know that. I'm going to close the window because there's planes flying by. Um, So a lot of people don't know that Cincinnati borders Kentucky, uh, but you grew up in the hills of Kentucky and you are now a LinkedIn internet celebrity, international business coach launched this amazing high profile network. So tell us about your origin story. How did you get to be doing what you're doing? Wow, that was a Apollo Creed style intro, man. Wow, thank you. And maybe pseudo famous and maybe more infamous. I don't know, we'll figure out at the end, right? Um, so what was the question again? <laughs> What was uh, it about? I'm like so blown away that you got so hyped up in your intro. You're like, yes, thank you, Rebecca. I feel so good exactly. right now. Wait, are, what are we talking about? Are we on a podcast? Um, yes. What is your origin story? How did you go from growing up in the hills of Kentucky to doing what you're doing? Yes, and I am. I, I'm starstruck. Absolutely. Right. Porky Pig. I can't even talk. You know, it, I'm actually more of a pink neck. So I'm I'm like 51% country and 49% suburban, right? And, and I went around as a kid. I was just, unfortunately, I neck? moved to pink neck. Oh, a pink neck. I've never heard of like, that. Like That's half different. city, half country. Uh, right. More country. I own the country, but I did. I grew up and I was moved around to the to the inner cities a little bit for a while. And I'm it really backwoods country. And uh, just really kind of unstable childhood, unfortunately, right? It's not the most glamorous thing to talk about. Um, and I just never figured out who I was. And um, so 
really LinkedIn came into play just a few years ago. It was just a few years ago. And if you want to hear the mini version, I can give it to you because that'll pretty much clarify every other thing my crazy butt says right after this. Um, but it was COVID, right? It was COVID. So I did everything I was supposed to do. Uh, I ended up going to school. So I'm an overly educated pink neck. I have two college degrees. I don't use any of them, right? So they're in business uh, and um, computer programming. And I, I did everything I was supposed to do. And, and really what changed my life was several years ago, I had uh, we, my, my wife and I bought this starter home down in the, in the country in about 2007. And the guy who built all the homes out there had foundation issues. They didn't build them right. So everything I did to be successful, right, go to school, get a job, work hard, blah, 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 was supposed to pay off. right? And it didn't. It was I worked a dead end job. And then three years after buying this house, we had to file bankruptcy to get out of it. So that was kind of my life's pattern, right? Like do everything I'm supposed to do. Oh, this will work. And it doesn't work, right? I was all passion and no clue for about four decades of my life. And so that kind of led me to finance of getting told no for a thousand times for year after year. And uh, it really didn't turn around until COVID. Right before COVID, I kind of found my stride. And then that story leads into, you know, how LinkedIn and the hounds and you know, me not being homeless and that kind of stuff. So it, I was really just a determined guy with with ambition. I just didn't have what it took until my, I had a mentor. And a real long story short, the way I got into finance was this mentor. The man was successful. He had nothing I needed. You know, he I had nothing to offer him. And uh, my cousin's goofy, but I like my cousin. I respected my cousin. He was goofier than me. Uh, but I was at his house one day and he was going through these papers, right? He's like, hey, man, we're going to pay our house off in eight years and get out of debt and all this stuff. He says, hey, I, I just told him, I said, get the hell away from me. You must be drunk. You know, we were out playing cards. And I said, get away from me. So, but he gave my number to that guy. And that guy called me up. And I'll tell you what, I'm so glad I didn't say no. It would have been a devastating life decision to not say no. And this is my principle. This is one of the PAC principles. I don't care if people say yes or no to me. What I encourage people to do is know what the heck you're saying yes and no to. If, if you're going to make a life-changing decision, you want to base that on a little bit of misinformation or you want to base that on all the possible information you can get. So, you know, I said, look, I don't know why this guy's talking to me. I never heard someone in finance that wanted to talk to a broke guy. So I was curious. And uh, honestly, I, nobody else was looking to help me, right? And then I knew my cousin. And I met with the guy and long story short, he changed my life. And so I decided to go help other people because if I was having this problem, how many other hardworking, you know, working class people in this country was having that problem? And that's really what it was. You know, I was closed minded, almost, you know, closed minded and it worked on me. So I said, hey, let me go out there and help other people because we're not stupid. We just don't know what we don't know. So that's so how I got into finance. The mentor who you met through your cousin, did he help you for free or did he charge you a coaching fee? No, he didn't. He, he never charged for his services. And that's why I built the hounds off the same way I modeled my business off his business. So, you know, kind of like a broker of brokers or relationship broker. I mean, if you have all these different companies at your disposal, well, you don't work for that company. It's like real estate. If you work yeah. with real estate and you have a broker that just shows you office space, he doesn't care which office space. He's going to get paid to get you the right solution, right? So it's the same thing. I don't care which company. The, the goal is that you have a written, detailed roadmap and game plan. Then only when we know what you need, then we go out there and shop around to find the best thing. And that's how I modeled the hounds of business, you know, and I don't do it just for millionaires. I do it for school teachers, pipe fitters. You know, it's, it's, I don't care how much money you got. I treat you the same. Right. And that's just kind of that whole country upbringing. Really. I just, and honestly, don't tell the other advisors, even though they don't want to work with folks making 60 grand a year, I'm telling you, I've got a lot of referrals from some really successful business owners and, and folks because of doing the right thing. Might have made five bucks on one client, but boy, that paid off. So it's that profitable rest of It's not the client you make five bucks on. It's they refer you to someone who has a lot of money to invest. So it's like one of the things I really enjoy about you, and I am part of your network, the Hounds of Business, is you're so good at connecting people. It's such a superpower and it's not necessarily your client, but it's who your client knows. So were you always a great connector and just a social butterfly or is that a skill that you had to learn later in life? 
Great question. No, I was kind of a super dork. I still kind of am, but I'm a confident, like valuable super dork. So it doesn't matter, right? You know, it's all in how you see yourself. Uh, but no, I always did, but I didn't have a lot of friends or confidence and a lot of, you know, good coaching and mentorship growing up for a very long time. So I kind of had to figure things out, you know. So back in high school and college, I was more like a slim shady, kind of annoying. Uh, but as I grew older, uh, thanks to my mentor, being around people that I kind of aspire to be around, you know, kind of learning their traits and, you know, birds of a feather flock together kind of mentality, I started piecing it together. And then it really came to a, a point when um, it really came to a head when I, I started LinkedIn. That that was really the, the crux. When COVID hit, they told me I couldn't go out and play anymore. And um, yeah, and I'm like, wow, I was at that time, I was a social butterfly. I would go out and just kind of make noise and make things happen. I led a nonprofit for three years. Uh, man, just exploded that thing quickly. I what mean, I really. What was the nonprofit for? What was the cause? Uh, it, well, it was helping people like me when I was a child. It, it was uh, food, financial, like uh, rent assistance, uh, electric bill, things like that. And we ended up, I ended up leading a program for self-sufficiency because wow. a lot of the folks didn't want hand out, uh, you know, handouts. They want to hand up. They wanted to get off assistance. Mm -hmm. And if you want to hear something funny, I never told anybody. You want to hear this? You yeah. got a business audience. So I went to the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I got this job. I had no experience. Honestly, I had to Google how to run nonprofits when I got this job. <laughs> but the <laughs> reason I got this job here, and I want, again, one of the PAC principles is courage before confidence, Rebecca. So when you so, say PAC principles, explain to my audience, what is the PAC? Oh, the PAC. That's the hounds of business community. My bad. I know we're all over the place. My fever yes, brain. The wolf uh, that, pack, the, right? Because it's the hounds of business. So these are the wolf pack principles that Michael runs his networking group on. So yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and I said, thank you. PAC principle. So courage before confidence, right? That was one of the principles that, um, that, that, I had just, I told you I had a fever today. I just lost it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, courage before confidence. And this is, uh, you were saying that you Googled how to run a nonprofit. Oh, yeah, that was what it was. So I, I, they, the board of directors was in there. And I found out later on when I applied for that nonprofit job that I was 14 out of 14. I can't even believe I made the list. Uh, but when they asked me, they said, why should we hire you? Something came over me. And it wasn't me talking. It wasn't the, the, the chicken me trying to get the right answer out. I just let it loose for the first time. And I said, you know what? I said, I'll tell you why you should hire me. Because now I know that you have a market that's untapped. 99% of all this area is not utilized. Either you're going to hire me and I'm going to do it for you or someone else, another nonprofit is going to hire me. I'm going to come here first and take it. The whole room believed me because they offered me the job right on the spot. And I didn't fail it, right? I did it. And, and I think that's that's kind of what I'm all about, right? Most of the time we think we have a business or marketing problem or something. When we actually, as you, that's why you're in business. We have a confidence problem. We have a guidance problem. You know, we, we can't see the forest from the trees. It's probably why chiropractors can't crack their own necks, right? <laughs> you know, I'm not my own financial coach. I'm a disaster. I, would, I can't be accountable to myself. That's goofy. So that's kind of one of the things that I, I modeled my own business and finance, but the hounds of business, because I realized I wasn't alone. I didn't want to be alone. And I did not realize there were so many heart centered, high level professionals that also kind of felt out of, like a fish out of water, right? They didn't really feel like they belong deep down inside, you know, and those kind of things kind of bridge the gap. And so COVID is the reason I kind of went from finance first um, into LinkedIn and helping people with sales and marketing training and all community building. I did not plan that. That was total accident. And I resisted it. How for did a you long discover time. LinkedIn? Because now like people like me, we're late to the party. I'm just trying to, you know, get in there and figure it out. Uh, when did you discover LinkedIn? And how did you realize it was just, you know, such a great uh, way to market your business? Yeah, that's where I was going before my fever brain took over. Thank you for that. You're a great host. Um, so, it, so it was uh, about two years into COVID. And when COVID hit, they told me I couldn't go out and play anymore. So I went online at 38, didn't like social, didn't grow up with it. Right? 
And I just started pitch slapping with a P, pitch slapping and spamming people for almost two years. So <laughs> people think I'm bald. I'm not bald because I wear this hat. Look, this this hairline right here, that receding hairline, that that sells navigator, right? That's bothering people <laughs> on social. That's why it fell out. And this side's my kids. So thank goodness I found a formula where you know I didn't have to keep bothering people and my hair didn't fall out. So longer story shorter, I had I met this crazy cage fighter. He was an influencer on LinkedIn. And his but name. he was different. He was what, different than what uh, is his name? I don't want to give his name because he got kicked off. Oh, <laughs> he, got, he got kicked off. He's in LinkedIn That's, jail. He he yeah, he's permanently, yeah. So um <laughs> I'm he's got other avenues. I don't want to mess with him, but he's okay. a great guy. He uh, he came out of nowhere like Wizard of Oz. I was sitting outside at Christmas about two years ago and he pulled the curtain back and he just started talking because I was about to spend my last four thousand dollars on a LinkedIn course. Thank goodness I didn't do that. That would have been a waste. Um, there's too many ball people buying haircuts out here. It's just ridiculous. Uh, but this guy shot me straight, you know, and, and he was talking about building no like and trust. He was talking about all the things that I love to do and knew worked offline. I didn't know how to do it online. It's like I showed up to a football game with a ball bat, right? It's like I didn't know the game, but I thought it was me. I thought I was defective, and that's the problem most of us have. So fast forwarding, this guy put me in his group, and about three months later, he asked me three questions. that def It changed my life, and it's changed countless lives through the hounds in business. He said, hey, he called me up. He said, hey, man, your profile picture sucks, and you're wearing a suit. Why? I said, Wow, they don't parse words in Chicago now, do they, man? I said, well, I'm a fiduciary, right? I'm supposed to brush my teeth, comb my hair, take a bath, wear a suit, you know, that, that kind of stuff. He says, is it working for you? Oh, heck no, man. I, I, make, I make more money crushing tin cans. No, it's not helping me at all. It's not working. He says, listen, he says, you're a country, working class, pink neck type of dude. He said, you explained investments by talking about chickens, for Pete's sake. He said, why don't you let yourself out? Why don't you just be yourself? I said, man, what are you talking about? I'll be the laughing stock. It will never work. He says, what do you got to lose? Oh, wow. I said, like, you know, I mean, Rebecca, if you're on the bottom, unless you got a shovel, I mean, you, you can't go further. And I said, you know what? He's right. I'm almost 40. Why do I even care anymore? <laughs> you know, so I did. I put this stupid hat. I did Larry the Cable Guy in reverse. I put this goofy hat on and I just went out there and it wasn't magically like everybody started hiring me. But I felt good about me and I started attracting and repelling the right people. So the hounds was started by this. I went out there instead of trying to pretend not to sell people and all that garbage. I totally had no agenda. I just found people that were kind of struggling through business and life, just like me, going through things. And I was teaching them all the things I learned. I taught them, I taught them LinkedIn. I taught them, you know, boosted their confidence. You know, we just shared friendships. And I did that for about six to seven months. And then guess what? The economy and market went down again. And guess who everybody came to? You. That's when I realized, you got it. That's when I realized, oh, wow. Reciprocity is not just a one-off or a lucky thing. This is a formula that I've created over screwing it up for 40 years. I knew what not to do until by process of elimination, I knew what to do. So, when you know, did you to this day, when did you launch the hounds as a formal networking group? You were just like making friends with people, helping them whenever you could online and giving them advice about LinkedIn. Cause you're kind of like a LinkedIn pioneer in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. When did it turn into the formal networking group called the hounds of business? Do you want to know my biggest and best beauty secret? It is liquid collagen. I started drinking liquid collagen three and a half years ago, and I am totally obsessed. I have never looked younger, fitter, leaner, stronger. My skin is glowing. My hair is thick and shiny. Eyebrows, eyelashes, nails, they're all growing, and I feel like I'm aging backwards. If you really want to know a huge hack to be balanced, beautiful, and abundant, you got to try this collagen. It is amazing. If you go to the show notes, you will get a $10 off coupon. If you buy two bottles, it's $25 off. And there's two versions. There's one for anti-aging and overall health. And there's another formula for fat loss. Both formulas are amazing. They taste great. 
and it's so easy to take. You just take a spoonful in the morning and a spoonful at night and just add it to your regimen. This stuff is off the charts. So make sure you go to the link in the show notes and grab yourself a couple bottles and tell me how much you love aging backwards. Thanks for watching the show and we'll be back to our regular content now. You know, actually, we were called the Eagles or, you know, shoehorns. It, it was just kind of not a formalized thing, right? And, and yeah. I think it was about that time, about maybe eight to nine months into me taking – when he got kicked off, I, the, my mentor, when he got kicked off, I took over. So that's where it just kind of really started snowballing because uh, I knew how to not make people mad. Is <laughs> I didn't make them mad like he did all the time. Um, but that was it. I, I realized – that other people felt the same way and they wanted to belong. So it was about nine months into this process when I realized this is a formula and we were attracted. So we started off as a friendship group and then we became attractive to business folks who wanted to be friends. So th to this day, people ask, is the hounds of business, are they a friendship group or is it a business group? We're both. That's what makes it so daggum special. A and you're right. Like I teach the formula in the playbook for people to do uh, to attract, right, to do the things that they can get in front of their ideal clients on LinkedIn. And then I provide the playground called the Hounds of Business. One or the other will help you because working with people, think about it. Who are you going to trust on LinkedIn or social media? Some rando you don't know or somebody that you worked and done business with who pushed you up, brought you value. You do the same thing. You use it to open doors. But once you see somebody, you start establishing relationships with that person. They don't do business because you have a nice meme or, or a video. They do business because they start to like who they see. They see your value. They see what you talk about. And you just keep moving them down that call to action, right? So we eliminated the sales pitch. I hate hardcore, pushy hunter mentality. I'm not knocking it. If you're good at it, hey, I salute you because I tried for 10 years to be good at it and I could not do it. So I had to find an alternative. I, I, I can go out there and bring value. I can go out there and love on the right people. And if someone else shares my values of reciprocity, it's like rag, rattling a bag of dog treats. It, I know the dog's going to come running. It's, it can't help itself, right? I mean, I help you. I you love help your me back. They, they are really country cool, as your bio says. So, I mean, what is what does this look like for you? You just like get on, get to know you Zooms and you just chit chat with people and talk about each other's business and see if you can help each other. Or how, do, how does this strategy work if it's not hardcore sales pitch? Uh, what it, What is it? it? It's an eco. Great question. It's an ecosystem uh, that that has the resources, the, the people all of these things that you need to be successful. Cause we have a million reasons and excuses that we're not. Well, now we kind of took those away from you. So my challenge is, Hey, give me one reason you can do it. And I, I tell you what it is. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. So there's this lady in healthcare. She's been trained by some really rock star people. I trained her last year, right after that. And then she came back recently, a couple months ago, she's in healthcare. She worked with this attorney. So, they were out there doing stuff and she called me. She's like, Hey, I need some help. Would you help me? Sure. I'll help you. So in one week we launched this article. Oh, I didn't even know what I was into. Right? I don't know healthcare. I just know how to win. Right. So it rattled the boat and I'm like, Oh my God, what did you make me do? Like, what did we just get into? It was a very it rattled the boat. It got her a lot of attention on LinkedIn. It, it, it dropped what $60 million at the end of this thing that it was, I don't want to get into the details, but yeah. And it wasn't, it was all kosher. It was just, nobody thought anybody would just call it out. And it, it was kind of the elephant in the room. Oh, I lots of benefits. What you mean. This article that she was featured in created $60 yes. million of revenue for her. I'm sorry. We wrote an article about this subject and this topic and mm -hmm. it went crazy in the industry. And it caused a lot of ruckus and it kind of opened up what should have already been opened up. And that was the tune of $60 million and a lot of forward progress for the industry. So it was Most kind of like be... a groundbreaking article with a, a new take on something to do in healthcare. And it really like it, caused a lot of- It weight. called, it, yeah, it, 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 it drew attention. You have to translate because we don't have a fever. <laughs> yeah, well, so, I can't get into detail, but I'm talking in code. But, <laughs> The, I'm talking. It, it, it called something out in a in a multinational company. It called out something that no one 
wanted to call out, but everybody wanted to be called out. So it was kind of like a whistleblower article. Not really. It was just there. Nobody just, everybody just kind of ignored it. Okay. And so we kind of shined a light on it and said, hey, here's a problem. And, okay. and that was a good thing. But that's, that's what I mean. It's different because everybody thought that was a win. To me, that wasn't the win. The win was is that ten we, uh, about 10 days after that, the, the other rock stars in healthcare and doctors and whatnot, right? They're innovators. They start their own businesses. I helped them to help my client, right? So I was tagging them. I was bringing them on different shows. I was just helping them to help her, open doors for her. Well, inadvertently, it opened doors for them. So guess who they reached out to within 10 days to help them? You. Me, right? Where's the sales pitch? That's the common theme of the hounds. If I go out there and share my crayons, practice my dadgum kindergarten skills, and I do that enough times for the right people, they will reciprocate. And the only thing I need is a call to action. The only reason people would go into my sales funnel and not go out is because they fall out because it's not clear. So we have a call to action. Right? So that's what I teach. I never buy. So uh, having clear. So what are some examples of clear call to actions that you use on LinkedIn? Beautiful question. So most people stop at this, these three things, right? So content, you hear content is king. I can't disagree more in most cases. And, and LinkedIn's a different animal. So I'm, I'm specifically thinking of LinkedIn when I say this. Right. So content's not king. How do I know that? Because my content's been not that great for two years and I would crush 10 content creators and results. Well, why? Well, because I'm not trying to be an influencer. I'm trying to connect with the person behind the screen to build relationships. So what I did was engagement first. Go generate curiosity, be seen, uh, but not take the spotlight, right? I, I, I make it all about that person. I, I help them out. I pay attention. Uh, I do meaningful things, things that will help them. And then they say, who is this? Who is this redneck guy, right? So then they come to me. Well, what, what happens? They look at the profile. So profile's number two. And okay. they, then they, the question is, does my profile attract and repel? Because you do want it to repel. You don't want certain people blowing up your DMs and wasting your time, right? And then third is content. Once you get past that, now they want to see, hey, who is this person? And that's where we really get into it. But even well, when we have those three thing, elements. What was the first who, thing? You said uh, the first was something, the second was profile, the third was content? Yeah. What's Outbound engagement. Oh, okay. So commenting and doing certain things for others. Yeah. Before we even, yeah, because- in the influencer realm or the common teaching, it's, it's all about attracting likes and all of these things. Well, we don't get paid to get likes. We get paid to connect and do business with no like and trust, right? And then try right. to buy. So, and think about this. You know that most of the hounds are women, right? You've been in it. Right? It's yeah. like 88%. You know, another dude just trying to sell stuff. I knew I was going to get pepper sprayed over Zoom if I kept that up, right? So <laughs> what I did was, I, I, I would do stuff to make them go, who is this? Because- everybody's been screwed by someone. So no one trusts anyone. So most of your clients on, especially on LinkedIn will come from lurkers. They'll never like anything. They'll never follow you. They'll just watch you to see if you're full of garbage or not. And that's what I see. But here's, here's how you overcome. It. Once you understand the formula and you're true to yourself, it's simple. They expect me to say I'm great. They don't expect hundreds of rock stars from all walks of life constantly say I'm great. And then people like Rebecca Whitman go, is he? Is he really great? So then you watch and you're like, okay, I, I, two months later, I see no inconsistencies, nothing but goodness and no expectations. I think I'm going to go reach out to this guy or Tanya or somebody's going to introduce me to you. Right. Right. And, and that's what I mean. We just, it's like a game of ping pong. If I hit the ball, you hit it back. I hit it harder. We keep this up. We're going to have Olympic style ping pong game. That's what I mean by profitable reciprocity. Does that make sense? Or is my fever like emergency room. <laughs> no, I, I get it. So I, I like that because you don't want to go on these social media sites having commission breath because everybody knows right away that you're trying to sell them something. So it's about creating a genuine friendship, being a human first and a marketer second and building that know, like, and trust. So, but that's the same on all social media platforms right now. What I want to ask you, Mike, is how how is LinkedIn different from Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and 
what really differentiates because you're, you know, you're building on LinkedIn kind of like right before everybody else has figured out, oh, there's not as many people on that beach. Let's move our beach blanket and towel over there. So you kind of like, like, that's why I say you're a pioneer on marketing on LinkedIn. So what differentiates LinkedIn from the other social media platforms? You, you can be successful on, you know, you can do sales and things, but people aren't expecting it, right? There's lots and lots of people that are just putting out their stuff for their grandma or their vacation to their friends. So it's not like they're, they're not trying to sell. So they're really, you know, it just, it takes, it's just a different atmosphere. It's like going to, you know, an outdoor uh, barbecue in a tuxedo. I mean, you could do it, but you're probably going to look and feel a little awkward, right? So LinkedIn's different because people are there to network. They're there for business in a business capacity, but you still have to have etiquette. You still have to understand the game, how it's played, the rules to the game, how, how the scorecard operates. Could you imagine the Super Bowl with nobody keeping score? Wouldn't that suck? Or they didn't understand the rules. They just threw a soccer ball out there halftime. Wouldn't that be goofy? So yeah. that kind of thing is why I think LinkedIn, LinkedIn has what 42% of LinkedIn has $77,000 or more in annual income. So mm -hmm. you know that you're, when you go fishing, there's a pool of fish out there with means, with connections. Uh, so LinkedIn is the only place that can qualify for three things that I teach clients now, clients later, and people who send me both. Mm -hmm. It's never a waste of time it, when you learn the system. Because think about it, if every day I get up and I can, either I'm going to have clients now or clients later or people who will eventually send me both, how can I lose? Right. Be it's just a matter of filtering, sorting, understanding your business. It's not about LinkedIn or social media. The people who say, well, look, I got a gazillion likes and made millions. You know why? Because they had their business stuff together. They already, like you, you already understand business. You have things in place. So yes, you can get a lot of likes and get a lot of uh, results, but most entrepreneurs don't understand business first. That's why I teach business. Half of, my half of my class is not LinkedIn. Half of my class is understanding business, understanding your clients, yourself, your, your identifiers, these kind of things. Then we can go out there and make content that matters. Then we can go out there and say things that make people go, ooh, we can create things, right? The call to action you were asking about, right? So from content, I don't try to sell in content. That's crazy. I want them to go to DM and then I want them to come on a show or in the hounds. I want to build that relationship. You know, then I want to keep moving them down the line to a call and then maybe a one-on-one. -on -one. If they go that far, why would I think it, the sales pitch would be hard? Because they're already wanting it. They wouldn't be they're here if they didn't want it. Yeah, they already, they're already in your community and they already see that you provide value. So yeah, that's that's really smart. Well, that is my next question actually when you are you know putting your content out and and you know on these different platforms like linkedin why don't you talk more about your main business which is financial coaching beautiful question oh my gosh i love your show uh because you know what you know what no one wants to hear about it uh, honestly it, it is grass isn't very expensive you know why because it's everywhere there, there's a million of me there's a million of everybody. So right. I, I just realized nobody wanted to hear. They were there to earn money, not have somebody move a little bit of money they had around if they had money. So what I decided to do was, and again, back to my financial business of growing the house. If I found Joe Rogan and Oprah before they're Joe Rogan and Oprah, I'll create my own daggum millionaires. I don't have to fight the top 10, right? I, I just go create my own and I'm willing to take that long game. And it was the same principle of saying, hey, I can just slow cook this journey, right? And, and so when here's, the, here's what happens. I help a client drop 20 grand in it's December. And then I look at that client and say, hey, before you get your butt handed to you uh, because you don't understand taxes or anything, how about we talk about that? How about I explain different uh, investments that you don't grand, understand? Does that mean earn 20 grand or spend 20 grand? No, they just earned. They just made another 20 Did grand. They drop in my language, being from LA, like I just dropped five grand on a purse. That means spend. So that's why, okay. So you help them earn 20 grand. Uh, thank you coaching. for that. Yes. Your coaching. Okay. The world is bigger than my uh, shed. And so <laughs> <laughs> you're awesome. Yeah. They earn 20 grand. And I say, Hey, before you get uh, your tail handed to you, 
how about we talk about this, right? Because no one's probably talked to them about the options available. You know, they just think, oh, well, IRA or something. So that's the much easier strategy. And then people start to go out there and talk about me because they expect me to say I'm great. They don't expect Jessica to go out there and talk to these people and say, hey, this is my guy. You know, they're going to take a vacation, talk about money. I'm going to get more clients because she's going to be going, I love this. And they're going, what are you talking about? We're not happy right now. You see what I mean? Yeah. That it's all about value. And it's all about giving your clients the call to action. Say, look, if you're happy with my service, the next time you hear somebody whining and complaining, tell them, you know, a redneck and let's talk. Then do you, offer, do you offer referral fees when people refer you clients? I do for some parts of my business legally for others. I can't, but, uh, absolutely. Yeah. For most, I've got, you know, again, the, the marketing LinkedIn, so that stuff. Absolutely. And, and here's, here's the fun part. I don't inflate the price to do it. I think that to me is that's not, that's not a country move. I take it out of my profits and I'll let them know I did that because I value that person. They put their reputation on the line to recommend me. So I want to make daggum sure they're rewarded for that, uh, because it's a two way street. Yeah, I'm I'm the same. I offer referral fees for my business as well. So what are your big scary goals and your vision for the next three years? Where are you going with with this really up and coming, growing too many people now that you probably even know personally community? It just started with a few friends and now this is like really taken off. Man, you got the best questions. Goodness gracious. And no, they, she didn't pay me to say that. I just said that because it's true. All right. Um, you know, it, it sounds crazy, but I know no other way. We will be the international resource hub and business bank that will change a million plus lives in three years. It, it, not maybe, not might. It will happen. And that stems from my past, my childhood, all those crazy things I talked about. Because here's the bottom line. My business, and this is what the hounds believes, right? This, this is, if you ask people in the hounds, they're going to say, yeah, yeah, we're on to this. My business is not, an ex it's just an extension of who I am, right? So money is the benchmark. If I help a lot of people, I made a lot of money. If I didn't make help a lot of people, I didn't make a lot of money. So I heard someone say this, because I'll give you some good stuff since you're such a great, uh, you're, you're great and your audience is great here. I heard someone say kind of in a snide way to someone, they said, well, how can you be heart centered if you're all focused about the money? Oh boy, that gave me the best thing ever. Cause he, I'd say this like a parrot. He, here's my answer. First of all, and I asked them, I said, Hey, have you, and when I do my group calls, I ask this question. Have you ever seen someone in need that broke your heart? You know, it could have been a family. I've, I've seen it last week, this family struggling with kids and it breaks my heart. And I would have helped them. You would have helped them, but you didn't have the time, money, and freedom to do that. Mm. See, that's the problem. So let me make it clear. Me and the hounds, absolutely. I want to be stinking, filthy, Scrooge McDuck, stupid, wealthy immediately. Because, because uh, seriously, I want to jump off an animated diving board into an animated pile of coins, just like Scrooge McDuck. Because the next time we have an anthology, I'm going to scholarship the whole thing. No one's going to know who did it, who's with me. Right. Because if a million people like us, Rebecca, had enough time and money to do what we wanted to do, we can make a serious dent in things like food injustice, equality, homelessness, things that matter. And I want to spend the next 40 years, if I'm blessed to have it, doing those things, not just working and trying to uh, accumulate crap. All right. And that's just from the heart. And I say this all the time because I want to make sure people don't invest in this. If that's corny, if that's too corny for people, we're not the best fit for them. But I'm afraid, you know, I want to make sure that people who are looking for us understand who we're, what we're about, that they shouldn't go to other camps because, you know, or they should do both, right? I, I'm just sick and tired of people feeling like they're not good enough and not having the courage before confidence. And that's why we attract some really great superstars like yourself. Like we had Bob, we were out there with Bob Berg hanging out all the, you know, pushing him up because he wants to reach back and pull somebody with him. That's how you are. You're, you're successful and doing great. And here you are helping me out. You're pulling other hounds with you. It's redneck Camelot, dadgummit, but it's profitable as hell. And it's fun, isn't it? Way it is. more fun than sales pitching. I love the analogy of we learned. I mean, there's a book. I haven't read it, but it's called Everything I Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. 
And uh, I like the analogy you say of sharing your crayons. That is like such a true analogy. And it's like service to many leads to greatness. And that is that is the new way for heart-centered entrepreneurs like us to achieve success and wealth is how many people can we impact and how many people can we help? And I know a lot of the people who are listening are you know in the same movement of wanting to achieve wealth and success but doing it in a way that you know creates a ripple effect of good in the world so that's really beautiful mike thank you for sharing your vision i'm so excited for you and excited to see how this is going to grow uh the last question of the day if you had a billboard on the side of the highway and it could say just one sentence that would be your life philosophy what would that be Oh man, I'm glad that was the last uh, question. I might get canceled now. Um, okay, you can edit this, right? Sure. All right. You can spray Lysol on a dog turd, but it's still a dog turd. <laughs> no, so yeah. here, here's what that means. That that was my seventh grade gym coach. <laughs> For obvious reasons, she was telling us to take showers, right? Because we were just spraying deodorant on ourselves. But to this day, it, be yourself and find a way to be yourself in a professional setting. Stop trying to. I see too many cats trying to bark and too many dogs trying to meow. I see introverts trying to be extroverts. Stop it. Stop. I told a lady the other day real quick. She said, you know, Mike, I, I know I need to be more extroverted. And I just lost it. I said, which ex? I don't want I won't use the words, if, but I said, what extroverted person told you to be more extroverted? And as soon as I said that, you could see the relief on her. I said, listen, I'm Julius Caesar, fireball, blah, blah, blah. I said, but you, you, you're quiet. You don't say much. You stand up and say one thing. You can blow me off stage. You, you're water. You're a tsunami, right? I said, be the best tsunami you can be. So the next day, we go on this Zoom call. This lady said, give us your elevator pitch course. They picked on me. I did okay. She said, ooh, 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 me. I'm like, well, who is this? She nailed it. She nailed it so well. I went straight weirdo in the DMs. I was like, oh my goodness, who is this? Wow, it was amazing what she did. So she didn't need six courses on speaking. She didn't need to be an extrovert. She just needed someone to say, you're okay, do you. And it's corny as hell, but it's the truth. That's why you, that's what half of what you do, isn't it? Is to inspire people to be the best self. Authentic, unapologetically authentic. And uh, that is that is the best way to step into your greatness and power, because as they say, when God made you, they broke the mold and nobody does you better than you do you. So when you're trying to imitate and emulate different people that you see online and business, you're right. It's it's not going to land with people because people can tell when you're when you're not being the true you, the authentic you. And I think real and raw is what people want. People don't fall in love with you for being like, you know, perfect and fake and plastic. They can see right through that. They want real and raw. Daggum straight. And by the way, you know who's so busy that she can't halfway take my calls now because business is flooding to her? That lady. And you know who's sending me people because she's a good person and she likes to reciprocate? That same lady. Again, I can invest in all kinds of channels to, to do all this stuff, or I can invest in people like that lady. That's what I want. Come check out the hounds, test drive it like you would a car. Hopefully you buy on clothes, you know, or, or try on clothes before you buy them. Hopefully you date before you get married. Check it out. Same thing. Hey, if we're not for you, you know, I'll, I'll find you somewhere. I had a guy the other day, he come in with that hardcore stuff. And I was like, oh boy, he was chewing on the carpet, you know, and just making a mess. And I said, come here. I know exactly where to take you. I took him over to the buddies where they crushed the tin cans on their head and they're all hardcore. I don't judge it. It's just not my style. I said, Hey, you, you belong here. It, it's, it's just putting people where they go. And because that away, life you does. You recommended he joined another networking group on LinkedIn. That's more hardcore. Ex absolutely. He was not a good fit for us. And but <laughs> that doesn't mean he's a bad guy. He, it means yeah. he needs to go to his tribe. And I was walking him over there. I don't, you know, I'm friends with those guys. That's great. 
Well, let's tell my listeners how to find you online, how to find the hounds, how to find you on LinkedIn, because I know they got so much value out of today's show. So where can people reach out to you, Michael? Well, Carrier Pigeon, if you're in the South and uh, or Game of Thrones, but if not, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's where I hang out 24-7. LinkedIn, uh, Mike Asherbrander, or the you know Redneck One. I got a website that's just so severely outdated, but you can still find me through that. It's called redneckfinancialcoach.com uh, or YouTube Hounds of Business. Yeah, so connect. Let's talk. Let's chat. Let's, you know, again, I have this much convincing in me. I, I, I hate sales. But what I can do is bring you value, get you started and uh, teach you some stuff. And then you can come back to me when you're ready or, or better. I'll send you somewhere you need. Right. I'll send you to, you may not need me and I'll send you to Rebecca or I'll send you to Tanya. And I love connecting people with the, what they need. It's a medical doctor mentality versus a pharmaceutical sales mentality in business. That's what I like. So it's never a wasted moment. I love to help people because they bring me people and I can be lazy in sales. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Michael, for being on the show. I hope you get well soon and get over your cold. Everyone, thank you for listening to another wonderful episode of the Balance, Beautiful, and Abundant podcast. My name is Rebecca Whitman. I'm your host, helping you go from burned out and overwhelmed to balanced, beautiful, and abundant. This is not just a podcast. This is a movement. We are showing people around the world that you can achieve success without feeling completely exhausted and burned out. So please share the podcast, copy and paste the link, take a screenshot, tag me on LinkedIn, and don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you next week with another amazing guest. And until we meet again, keep your vibe high and magnetize. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to another amazing episode of the Balanced, Beautiful, and Abundant podcast. It's your loyal listening that makes our show top 0.5% in the world. I would love to connect with you in person. We're having our second international retreat October 3rd through 6th in Belize. If you like yoga, sound baths, and want to get all seven pillars of abundance to a level 10, this retreat is for you. Just go to the link tree in the show notes to snag your $200 off promo code before April 15th. And let's end the year 2024 with momentum so that going into 2025, you will have so much abundance in all areas of life that you will be setting yourself up for the most most incredible year ever. It is going to give you something to look forward to all year. Make sure you snag your spot before April 15th. And if you have any questions, you can always email me at RebeccaElizabethWhitman.com. My email address is on my website. Thank you so much for your loyal, loyal listening. And we will see you on the next episode. And some of you lucky, lucky ladies, we'll see you in Belize. Bye.